Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the ID of objects as well as passing objects to functions and if they're changeable inside of those functions. So we're just going to get a little bit more clear on working with these objects. So the very first thing you need to understand is the concept of an ID. So what we could do is we could print ID of book. And what is the ID? It's referring to the identity of an object. And it's guaranteed to be unique among objects in existence. So it uses the object's memory address. So if two objects exist, they are always going to have different IDs. So let me prove that to you here. I mean, I can't prove every single case, but I can give you an example. ID of book and ID of book two. These should be different numbers. And indeed they are. This one ends with 808 and this one ends with 608. So we got two objects in memory and they have different IDs. Even though they have the same data, they are considered different books. We basically created two of the same books here and they both exist. This is 100% different than if I did this. If I said book two is assigned book, well now these refer to one book. We basically created two variables to point to the same book in memory. And running this now, you can see these have the exact same ID. So comparing the identity of an object is a lot different than comparing the values of the object. So if we wanted to compare to see if two objects were the same in memory, here's how you do it. You say book is book two. And running this, we get true. Basically, it's a shorthand of doing print ID of book is equal to ID of book two. These are gonna give the same exact thing. They both say true. This is different than if they happen to have the same data. So in this situation now, they are the same in terms of their data, and they're even considered equal. Book is equal to book two. However, they are different books in memory. So we get true, false, false. It's just like what we expected. This is important when we are dealing with functions and passing objects to these functions. So I wanna create a function to illustrate some of these points. We'll just give it some useful name like do something. And this is going to take a book. And what I wanna do with this book is I wanna change the title. So book.title, we'll just set it to something new. After the function definition, we are going to invoke it, do something, and pass in our book. We actually don't need the second book here, so we're just gonna toss that out the window. And after this, we're going to print book.title. Or actually, we can just print the book, because it'll have the title in there. Running this, and it says something new is 72 pages long. So what you should get from this is, one, functions can change the data of objects. And that was the only thing I had to say, so just one. And what else in here is that we can print the ID of book just to kind of obnoxiously follow it. So let's get the ID of book and we're gonna print it. We're gonna do that there. We're gonna do it when we create it. If I can get the indentation right. And we're going to do it here as well. So we print the ID when we create it. We print the ID before we change the data inside of the function and then after we change the data. And running this, we get the same value three times, exactly what we expected. But now I wanna try something different and actually assign this a new book. And it's gonna be called something new. It's gonna be 72 pages long. Well, in this situation, we're actually creating a new book in memory and we're basically replacing where this variable points to. So running this, we can actually see a change in numbers right here. So this print is actually printing a different area of memory. And anytime we replace the value of a variable within a function, that does not persist on the outside. So outside of here, we are still getting are you my mother from the original creation. So lesson learned just to conclude this, passing objects to functions we have the risk that the functions change the data. If the function replaces the data with a new object, that does not alter the original object. As soon as we assign this a new object, 
that original reference is gone. This concept of how these objects are passed is known as pass by object reference. So we're passing a reference to an object, but if we replace that reference, then there's no longer a connection there. So hopefully that was helpful. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna start reading data from text files, and ideally we get to the point where we can read these objects all from a text file, and then we're gonna move to a database and just keep building up the complexity. So stay tuned, I'm excited, hopefully you are as well.